Okay. Welcome, everybody. I think we are live. There's already nine people watching. And uh, feel free to write in the chat at any time for questions. Here we are today um, with Kalina, Carla, and Julia. And we're going to talk about social dreaming. Um, today, the the, it's the first episode of this series of conversation around social dreaming. And uh, uh, we are currently working on the program and uh, we're gonna make uh, the announcement of the next live streams. But today is the, is the very first one and it's the live uh, situation. So stay with us and, uh, and we're gonna jump into it very soon. This program um, were, is brought to you by Psychology of Sailing uh, and Kalina Staminova. And um, we are in, uh, we just launched. So if you want to support us, uh, please like this video on the page. Subscribe if you want to know when the next one are, are going to come. And, uh, and consider reach out to, if you think about sponsoring or contributing with your uh, if you want to be part of the conversations as well, uh, we're going to do more in the future. So uh, be in touch. We're going to have a lot of channels through social media and, and email to, to communicate, to, to make this initiative grow. And um, I will just say very uh, small introduction about social dreaming uh, for the people that are not very familiar with, uh, with social dreaming. Um, social dreaming was uh, developed and validated by Gordon Lawrence and many other colleagues, and uh, it's been uh, it's been used in different settings for research for uh, for uh, many many situations uh, over the course of forty years now. Um, Gordon Lawrence carried forward the, the tradition of the action research of the Tavistock Institute and uh, devised a method of uh, social science to incorporate the unknown into known thinking. And uh, this was uh, very pioneering because he had to break some stereotypes that circulated before in academic and public institution, which saw dreams only as, uh, as the realm of psychoanalysis and of the relationship between uh, client and psychoanalyst. And uh, Gordon Lawrence had this uh, merit of, of bringing this discourse forward and to open uh, the sharing of dream into other contexts which are more institutional and more uh, uh, group uh, related. So. Um, of course, I can spend a lot of time to talk about social dream, but we are not here for that. We are here to see what other people are doing right now with social dreaming, because uh, in the past year, especially, there's been uh, a lot of social dreaming going on. I was involved directly, and through social dreaming, I met Kalina, I met Carla, and now I also met Julia. And so I am very interested to to hear mostly from uh, from people who do social dreaming uh, directly, what's their experience uh, and what's what's going on right now with social dreaming. So um, yeah, so I introduce uh, Kalina. Kalina is an academic and consultant. Her interest is mostly in psychoanalytic research methods. Uh, particularly group relations theory and practice and unconscious processes and dynamic in the virtual world. Uh, is it correct, Kalina? Uh, we need your... the new technology, yeah. forgot the microphone. Thank you, Fabio. <laughs> and no um, uh, hello to our viewers as well and to our guests. Uh, uh, here in uh, Zoom. When we were thinking about the idea for the conversations, which Fabio took very energetically, uh, we were thinking that in the last uh, in the last year in the pandemic there were quite a lot of mattresses, 
And uh, Fabio made a very interesting point. He said, maybe they were there, but the new technology made it visible. So we can actually see who is doing uh, what and, uh, and where. Maybe people have been doing all these new applications, developments, new and old, we don't know. We hope to find out more in the, in the conversations. But uh, yes, uh, what times uh, we are living in? And uh, we were thinking, yes, it's a small project, but maybe it's a good idea to document, to try and record uh, what, what has been going on, uh, what um, the developments, what are the applications, uh, the traditions, um, you know, in these um, uh, conversations. Yes, it's an interesting, um, interesting journey, uh, so to say. And uh, I would like to introduce our first guest to the series, Carla Pena and uh, Julia Radi. And uh, Carla is a psychoanalyst in Rio de Janeiro. She is a member of the scientific uh, committee of the group Analytic Society International. She has a PhD in psychoanalysis in culture. Uh, she has also published uh, two books, uh, The Social Unconscious in uh, Portuguese, and she's finishing another rather interesting book, The Crowd Reflections from Psychoanalysis and Group Analysis. And I think she might correct me, but I think she is a sort of a pioneer of social dreaming in, uh, uh, in uh, 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 Brazil and uh, uh, sh she will probably tell us a bit more what's uh, happening and what does it mean to be a pioneer, to convince people, well, look, there's the social dreaming and maybe it's helpful, maybe it's good, exciting perhaps and difficult, I don't know. Um, but, um, um, we'll ask our guests to reflect on their experiences and development. And Julia Radi is a psychotherapist and she has been working with two colleagues, Hilaria Pellegrini and Daniela Moscufo. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing the, the, the names correctly. And um, it's a project which is called Sonio Sonio Dunque Sono, and it's a pro project of social dreaming based on movies, uh, born from the idea of uh, uh, Julia and uh, her two colleagues uh, to manage the anguish and the physical distancing of the first COVID lockdown in March, May 2020. Perhaps she will tell us more why they chose the movies and what they were hoping, how they integrated that. We also asked uh, our guests to think and reflect broadly about uh, three things, their own involvement and the development in their country or in that particular field of uh, social dreaming but also the role of the host, because we think people might be hosting in a different way, depending on the application. And finally, how they make sense of the dreams which are coming uh, to the matrix and the associations, the data which is created. What theory, are they using any theory? What theory are they using to make sense of that? So, I'm hoping for quite interesting conversations. And um, Carla, I think we can start with you. Okay, thank you very much, Kalina and Fabio, for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be with you and to work together today with Julia as well. Thank you. Well, in a way, it's a, it's a kind of pioneering work here in Brazil. There are some colleagues from uh, Psychodrama who works with uh, social dreaming. And even Gordon Lawrence was invited 
to come to Sao Paulo, but he couldn't come. Uh, he was uh, very well but, uh, at, by that time. But my first contact with uh, social dreaming was in 2008, eight, when in several uh, international conferences, I started to, part to, to, to join social dreaming matrices as a participant. From 2013, I started to work in Belgrade with Marina Mojovic, and she uh, or organizing together with her a series of, wor of workshops and also uh, 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 hosting some events on group analysis, group relations, and other topics as uh, connected to uh, groups. Mm -hmm. She is uh, she developed a methodology named Reflective Citizen. And in her methodology, she works with social dreaming matrices. So in this, this journey, we uh, had, she invited persons like David Armstrong, Honey Biran, Angela Eden, well-known people in the field of social dreaming, and uh, to, to host matrices. So I had contact with them. In 2003, uh, 2013, sorry, I uh, was invited to for a lecture on dreams in Brazil, so it was a, a, an opportunity to introduce social dreaming. Mm. And then I, I, after this lecture, I wrote a paper introducing social dreaming. So it was the first pu uh, published paper on the topic. After that, I started to, to host at the, my psychoanalytic society, name it Círculo Psicanalítico, uh, some events with uh, social dreaming matrices. One of mm -hmm. them was uh, in the, the day that our president, Dilma Rousseff, was impeached. She suffered the impeachment. So the dreams were highly connected with uh, Brazil and despair and things like this. After that, I started to, to, to be invited by universities to explain and host matrices with the students, psycholo psychology students. And in one of them, I ministrated a post-graduation course or on intersubjectivity, transubjectivity, and social dreaming. But what happened is that it was in 2017. In 2017, the, the, the book from Charlotte Ber Berhardt, uh, uh, The Third Reich of uh, Dreams in the Third Reich, was translated to Portuguese. And two years later, the pandemic started. So people became interested on the social dimension of dreams. But the point is that they are not aware of Gordon Lawrence, nor with another work with social dreaming matrices. And then all of a sudden the pandemic started and mm -hmm. people started to ask for dreams. They, they, be, they became very interested on collecting dreams, but they collected as psychoanalysts individually. So I mm -hmm. felt impelled to, to organize matrices by myself and I, I organized it in a university, hosted for every week for every week for three months this this matrix uh, with them, and I host privately a matrix every month, and also continue to host at my psychoanalytic society. So this is what is happening. This is perhaps this makes me a pioneer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is good, good, uh, nice things and bad things. But let's listen to Julia, isn't it? Yes, yes, uh, Julia. I just forgot to mention. We'll finish. Uh, we'll leave fifteen minutes for questions from the audience as well, from the viewers, uh, before before we end uh, the talk today. Uh, yes, Julia. What's been what's been happening? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
Thank you. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank uh, Fabio for contacting us, uh, Kalina and Fabio for the organization of this meeting. Uh, and also Carla, because uh, her experience is very interesting uh, and we have to learn a lot from her. <laughs> I come from Italy as uh, Daniela and Ilaria who are uh, logged in in this uh, uh, live video. And um, in Italy, we are not pioneers of uh, social dreaming because as you know, uh, it's very uh, used and well-known technique. Uh, but uh, um, we uh, try to organize our own experience. Uh, we are three psychotherapists. Uh, we are friends, colleagues. Uh, we did the same uh, psychotherapy training uh, in uh, a school uh, which acronym is SIPSI and uh, is based in Rome. And uh, there we learned and experienced the technique of social dreaming. Mm. And uh, during the first lockdown in March, uh, uh, we were thinking um, from our own experience that we were needing uh, to process our complex emotions, uh, uh, which were caused by the social changing, uh, by the isolation. We needed the social uh, contact, uh, uh, even if only online, uh, only virtual. So we decided uh, to organize a social dreaming session only for the, for the three of us. That was the beginning. So we watched the, uh, and it's a social dreaming experience based on movies, uh, because there are uh, so many different uh, ways to use social dreaming. And uh, we thought that the movies uh, were useful in that moment to process our emotion, were a good, uh, um, uh, a, a good, um, I, I don't know, a good suggestion uh, to process our emotion, yeah. And uh, we decided a movie, we watched the same movie the same night and we tried to focus on our dreams uh, and feelings during the night experience. And the day after, during an online uh, session, we worked on our uh, social dreaming, um, trying to find uh, some... Uh, um, connections, uh, some patterns, uh, some uh, connection even with the topic of the movie and uh, with the social situation. And this uh, um, was, uh, I think, a lot of relief in that hard situation. So we thought to expand uh, the experience to other people, uh, friends of friends of friends. Uh, we called the group uh, that was created a group of uh, quarantine randoms. Uh, and we were a group, for example, of 17 people Mm -hmm. with a gender equality based in different cities in Italy, different ages. But we were linked by this experience, uh, uh, which was watching the same movie and uh, trying to focus on our dreams and feelings during the night. And so was... you, you tell the participants, watch this movie and come to the social dreaming on the next day. Is that exactly? What... Hmm. Or sometimes were the participants to suggest the movie uh, to dream on. So uh, we had this process and uh, all the participants gave us a good feedback uh, that they felt uh, very useful, this experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we continue, we did like 15 sessions from March to July. And then how, we did, how, how did you select the movies? That's really interesting. Did you have any criteria? or deciding we'll ask people to watch this particular movie? Actually, we were following uh, our uh, emotions. Uh, the criteria was that nobody had to watch the movie uh, uh, before the social dreaming. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, that was a good selection. And then we thought about social topics. We went to Korea, we went to Japan, we went to the Greek uh, cinema industry, we went to Hollywood. Uh, uh, we also used some movies of France, like experimental movies or, uh, you know, uh, first, uh, first sight opera. And uh, we uh, chose randomly um, using the agreement of the group for mm. the topic. Yeah, but uh, that was the experimental moment, uh, which was definitely not 
structured. And since that moment, uh, we decided that uh, we could have uh, uh, organized something more structured. And now we are going on with this experience. Uh, um, we organize uh, four uh, um, short cycles of four sessions of meetings which are linked by a topic, like, uh, for example, the topic can be relations, so we can work, relationships, uh, so we can um, suggest movies uh, about uh, the different kind of relationships. And uh, um, we, we work on these topics, and the short sessions uh, makes very useful to uh, build a matrix, to build a group, uh, and to work uh, from a beginning to an end. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. We also we also asked Carla and Julia to reflect on the role of the host, which seems to be different uh, in uh, different social dreaming matrices. So, how do you define the role of the host, um, Carla? Perhaps first. Well, okay. Thank you. Well. One of the things that we, we should have in mind is that there is no training. Nobody knows what is social dream. So this is, is necessary to explain to people what is social dream. And some you, mean there's no, you mean there's no training in Brazil? No, no training in Brazil. And mm. only one book published in Portuguese. For example, the name of the book, it's... Uh, um, it's difficult to explain, but I didn't like the the translation, so mm. I changed it. The, the yes, name. yes, so I was thinking when yeah, when yes. when you were saying about the university and the psychoanalytical society, I was thinking how did she explain the idea to these people? Yes, the point is that there was this lecture and a paper, and this paper I explained exactly since Freud. The, the, the first uh, research on interdisciplinarity and intersubjectivity, the idea of intersubjectivity of dreams since fantasy. And I, I, I made a research in many psychoanalytic authors until uh, beyond, and, and it was possible to, being psychoanalysts, knowing these authors, to understand how Gordon started to, to, to work. And with the publishing of the book in Portuguese, uh, The Third Reich of the Unconscious, it became easier for them because all of a sudden it became a boom. It, one mm -hmm. idea, and the idea of collecting dreams became uh, very interesting, uh, mm -hmm. appealing, but they don't, they don't know that this idea is already has 40 years almost, no? Mm -hmm. So the fact started. that you are a psychoanalyst, actually, it's very helpful for hosting. Yes. Mm, hosting for sure, session. it's, it's mm. so. So when, when I invite people, I send them my paper because it's in Portuguese, and I suggest the, the book published. The first book from Gordon Lawrence was published in Portuguese. So they can read about the book. If they can read English, it's better, but in general, they don't. So, and then when I start the matrix, I, oh, before when I invite the person, I have a phone call and I explain, I have a long conversation to the person and I explain what happens. Mm -hmm. But the major problem I think is that when you don't have a culture of social dreaming, it's mm -hmm. difficult for people to understand. Most of all, because it's difficult to understand the difference between a matrix and a group. And then I had mm -hmm. to explain these differences. Mm -hmm. This is one of the difficulties. And then every time I'm, I'm, I, I have 10 minutes before the matrix starts, I explain. Carla, can you explain, to, can you explain to us the difference between a matrix and a group? I, 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 I explained that the matrix is a, is, is a womb. And, and I work with the idea of, of the, that something will grow in mm -hmm. the, from the matrix. And the idea of the 
the dreams and the thinking on dreams will be amplified and expanded through the infinite, which is an idea from Gordon. And mm -hmm. a, a, a group, I explained, there is a lot of transferences and counter transferences and relationship between people. So I, I use these, these, these two, very, very, very briefly, these two differences to, to tell them. This is one of the difficulties. The second difficulty is that I explain that the person needs to offer the dream to the matrix. When the person offers the dream to the matrix, it's not anymore a personal property. The dream is not anymore uh, an individual dream. It belongs to the matrix. And then the associations needs to be uh, uh, connected or the other dreams that will be told. But mm -hmm. it's difficult for some to, 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 to ignore the, the, the day rests or some associations. Well, we were, I'm, I was feeling very anxious and then I slept and had this dream. So it's very difficult. As a host, I need to explain in the beginning and then in the end, I explain a bit. But I don't play the person, oh, this is right or this is wrong because I want to make people like the idea of sharing dreams together and like the idea of associating or, and giving, you know, uh, uh, get losing the ego you know, and sublimating the ego, the personal, and, and developing something together with the matrix. So this is important, the idea of containing all these, these processes and all these um, difficulties that, I, but that I'm sure that every, every matrix that a person takes place uh, belongs, it becomes more easier for them to understand. And mm -hmm. I've been experiencing people saying, so it's so fantastic. I discover a totally new way of thinking, of understanding my dreams in connection with the social, understanding that social dimension of dreams. And then even it's interesting because they start to have dreams more connected to the social. It's very, very mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the points. You know? So you were saying there's some value in people uh, coming together, particularly in the pandemic, and just sharing uh, exactly. dreams. Th this mm. is one of the points that is very, very important. Uh, uh, but before answering this, I, I would like to say that uh, it's I understood that every matrix hosted in a different country has a different perspective. I've been in mm -hmm. matrices in different countries. So every matrix is different, not mm -hmm. only because of the host, but also because the context in which the country is inserted. Oh. And with the pandemic, people were uh, extremely distressed, extremely uh, uh, feeling uh, physical and um, psychic pain. Uh, mm -hmm. anxiety, fears, exacerbated uh, 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 in relation to the, the, the political difficulties and the difficulties that uh, our government are facing regarding the, 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 the situation of the pandemic as a whole. No, because we face a lot of struggles and people are feeling really helpless, extremely distressed. So the idea of belonging, because it's not belong to a matrix, it's not an idea, to, but to belonging to something, to, 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 a, mm. to a space maybe, no? where mm -hmm. dreams will be shared and people will understand that the others are facing mm -hmm. similar difficulties is very 
uh, seductive. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, it's all about a, a social dreaming matrix. It's not about it, no? about putting people together, feeling warm and things like this. But in a way, I think that we are also reflecting much about what is what means to host matrices online during a pandemic, during the pandemic? What is the meaning? What is the social meaning of doing this right now? So this is something that touches me much and I would like to really reflect and discuss with the others because mm -hmm. it's different in regular times to, 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 to organize a matrix, a mm -hmm. matrix to share dreams or in an organization, or in an uh, organizational consultancy, then hosting matrices online with people in social distancing. So this is something that, as a clinician, I have on my, in mind, and I always try to balance my psychoanalytic knowledge. I'm much attached on Klein and beyond, and 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 other authors from British or object relations uh, mm. uh, uh, tradition. So, but this is something that these this, 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 this frontiers are narrow. So we need to, this is something to, for the future, to explore mm. in the future. Mm. Yes, very interesting. Is there a transference and counter transference in the matrix? Okay. Uh, I don't know, you were saying there isn't any uh, quite a lot of interesting uh, topics. Um, Julia, what about in your context? Yes, um, of course, we, as you got, we don't have an experience of a not COVID scenery, of a not online scenery. So our experience has all began uh, during the lockdown. So uh, we can't compare to other metrics uh, or to other experiences because we didn't manage others. So we only took part to it or uh, we trained uh, on it. So uh, it's, I think it's different. So I thank Carla for this reflection because it's mm. very interesting and probably we can uh, have other further discussions uh, about it. And um, what is our role as host? Uh, is a facilitating role. As you know, uh, we are three and we all take part to the meetings uh, and we try to um, just uh, manage the conversation terms, the uh, different parts of the uh, meeting, because we try to find a structure. After the first not structured uh, experience, we try to build a structure for the session of social dreaming. Of course, what Carla said uh, is our, uh, you know, our uh, Bible, like not judge, uh, accept everything. And this is uh, the only rule that we put uh, inside the group. And um, the first part, uh, we let do you, the do you also tell the group the, the, the dream is no longer individual dream, but it belongs, which seems like a fundamental rule of uh, social, it, it no longer it has individual meaning, but it belongs to the matrix. And now it has slightly different meaning. Do you tell that in your social dreaming? Yeah, definitely, because uh, sometimes uh, uh, there are new participants to the group, to the matrix, so we make a small introduction in which uh, we give the basic of social dreaming, when was born, from who, what is the aim, and the, the social uh, uh, dimension of it. Uh, and uh, this uh, nurture, which is given to the group by each participant uh, and uh, that each participant receive and that the groups, uh, the group becomes a new creature involving all the people. Um, um, so yes, that's definitely a part of our meetings because we give this small introduction at the beginning. And then we just let the participants uh, tell their dreams and their experience. Of course, we have a, a psychoanalytic background, uh, so we try to give uh, a, a 
um, to let everything be inside the story of the night, not only the dreams, but also, as Carla mentioned, the, the night feelings, uh, like a head struggle to fall asleep, uh, or I don't know, um, I was sweating, I woke up so many times to go to the toilet, uh, or uh, if the person is not taking part to the meeting, uh, also that part is part of the group, uh, is part of uh, what uh, the group is giving uh, to the participants. So everything uh, uh, is uh, uh, under analysis, but not in the classical psychoanalytic way. But so everything you, is you part are, of the group. Yes, but, but you are not making this differentiation of whether it's a matrix or a group. Uh, no. You're more like looking at group. Mm. I think that the group uh, learn itself how to be a matrix. Uh, so we don't give this specific indication what is the difference of a matrix or of a group. But our mm -hmm. role as facilitators is exactly this, to try to keep the group inside this uh, um, frame, mm -hmm. uh, which is the social brain frame. So we try to avoid the rational thinking or uh, a critic about the movie uh, but we try to uh, support the association, the free association language uh, and uh, thoughts. Uh, so that's the direction of the group. And then at the end of the session, after the uh, review of the dreams and the night feelings, uh, after the free association moment in which we try to find patterns between dreams, between uh, uh, social reality, between the topic of the movie. So there are really a lot of... Uh, a um, lot of uh, topics, a lot of uh, contents uh, inside this session. We try to have a weaving role. Uh, uh, we try to uh, be weavers and to knit together uh, what came out uh, from uh, the complete experience. So not interpretation, but knitting together. Try to find uh, uh, these, uh, um, what came out from all these little pieces, little patchwork uh, of this social dreaming experience. Mm -hmm. And um, that's mostly how we work uh, as, um, as weavers. And the only thing that um, probably can be interesting is that uh, what came out from the meetings that I didn't tell you, but probably is the most interesting thing, is that uh, in the different uh, phases of COVID, we had completely different dreams uh, and moods uh, and feelings. And uh, we probably confirmed uh, what uh, everybody heard uh, during the COVID, uh, that sentence uh, which says, uh, we can't get back to normality because normality was a problem. So the dialectic of uh, Hegel, uh, like the word before COVID was kind of thesis, uh, the word during COVID is kind of antithesis uh, mm -hmm. and that we need to find uh, a synthesis uh, from what we learned during the COVID period. So that's the uh, main uh, product of our uh, first group of social dreaming, of our first matrix. Interesting, mm -hmm. uh, Julia, mm -hmm. because it also happened, I also perceived during, during the different phases because there was a moment that I was hosting every week matrices. And in a way, the dreams were following the different phases of the COVID mm -hmm. and the, administ dog, the government administration of the crisis. So it was very interesting because in, in more positive weeks, the dreams were more, more positive. Mm -hmm. And when they, people were more distressed, uh, the dreams were more fragmented or even reaching to, to, to the impossibility of dreaming. So this is something that it's common huh? in our world. Mm -hmm. I have a, a question, if I may, uh, that, that came from listening to you. And, and it's the idea which I also saw in many social dreaming I organized and also I attended in other series as if COVID at certain moment when the, the need for, uh, for people to, to express themselves, to, uh, to fight isolation and to, to express the fears and the, 
and the difficult emotion they were living was blocking the, the social dreaming process, the process of uh, looking for, uh, for new thoughts and, uh, and new uh, ideas was like hijacked by the need of the population to, uh, to have a relief from what they were living. I don't know if, you, if it makes sense and, and you had the, an experience definitely. like that. Definitely, definitely. And that's why the, 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 the whole of the host became more important in this in these situations because I I felt uh, I can tell you that I felt a different uh, emotional experiencing experiences hosting matrices during the pandemic and before I feel mm -hmm. more heavy when I feel when I end the the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. if I can add, uh, as I said, uh, we don't have an experience uh, of a pre-COVID uh, uh, moment, but um, what we felt during the COVID uh, dreams and emotions was to go inside uh, rather than outside, uh, uh, was in the way that all the things that we were uh, trying not to look at in our life came out because we had more time to look at. So it was like uh, a very uh, going inside process uh, what mm -hmm. uh, happened in our social dreaming experience. And I can give you just an example that uh, during the phase two of our social dreaming where people could begin to go out uh, and uh, do something in the real world, in the social world. Um, we watched uh, a movie of uh, Jodorowsky, The Psycho Magic. I think that the translation is this. And uh, that was uh, really therapeutical because uh, after a moment of uh, being stuck inside ourselves and our problems, that was very... Um, a moment in which you can do something to change something because it's all about rituals uh, to change our patterns, uh, that movie. And that was also in our dreams. So uh, that's interesting how the COVID moment, the, the choice of the movie and the feelings of the group uh, go together with the moment of uh, the social world. Mm -hmm. Fabio, are there any questions from... Uh... Uh, from the viewers? Not yet. I see we had uh, 21 viewers at, at most, and now there are 18. And I invite people also uh, live by voice to put question in the in the chat if they have any. I already wrote it in the comments, uh, but I think we can. Uh, I can. I can say the question if it appears. But if we have other question, we can go ahead. With, uh, right, with our guests. because it's more perhaps a question for Carla, but I'm really interested uh, in the differences between a social dreaming matrix, I mean, with people being physically present mm, and with a social dreaming matrix online, which is held oh. online. I, I, Can you, yes. mm, what's, mm. What's, 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 what's happening? Well, one of the, one of the, uh, the things is that uh, it's, it's, it's funny because uh, uh, when I explain to people how, how people sit in the in the face to face meeting, there is this no snowflakes clusters. Mm -hmm. And in Brazil, it's difficult to talk about seat like chairs disposed as snowflakes because we don't have snow. We see on the movies, but the, the snow flow falling in the floor, we don't know, that's it. And then I was thinking, oh, as a star, which is close to a possibility of sitting in, in, in this, mm -hmm. this, this position. So there is a lot of adaptations. This is one of the, the adaptations that we need to changes to when you, you move the country. No, mm -hmm. but I think that, uh, the online experience of uh, social dreaming is, is very, very interesting mm -hmm. because it, it's all over the world. People from, from Australia to Alaska, 
is uh, participating on social dreams. So, and it's very, this is for me one of the most important things. In terms mm -hmm. of hosting, I, th mm -hmm. I think that uh, the democratic uh, thing that uh, Gordon imagined is more present in the face to face because uh, in the face to face in the in, on screen because everybody is 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 in is seated one after the other you if you, you you have 25 persons you can see all the faces and to me this this is the, the in my fantasies this democrat this is more democratic in a way mm -hmm. because you you can even uh, we have the difficulties, of course, on Wi-Fi, but it's more democratic because people from all over the world, if they have a phone, they can join. This is one of the things. Mm -hmm. But I think that really, really, um, the focus on the dreams and perhaps the, the way people bring the associations changes online from face to face. Mm, there is that's really interesting. Mm. Yes, because when you are face to face, you are more introspected, introspected on your own, or on the the on telling the dream. And you are not paying attention to faces and this. Or on when you are online, you are seeing everybody at the same time. You are bringing the dream. And uh, perhaps this this pinpoint of associations from someone from the back, from someone from the front, this tridimensional tri perspective mm -hmm. is something that is lost mm -hmm. in the in the face to face because you you see the face of the person uh, telling the dream. So I think that more experienced uh, social dr uh, dreaming uh, hosts, they, they there will be a, a certainly a, a shift a, in the me method. But I mm -hmm. think that is also so welcoming that is being possible to experience other thing, other possibilities of working in social dreaming, especially because I come from psychoanalytic field. So mm -hmm. uh, Freud and his disciples, there, there was a lot of struggles and people wanted to preserve the pure gold of the pure psychoanalysis. And I wouldn't like that the, this spirit of association and dreaming and amplif amplifying dreams uh, face any loss with this idea of this is not possible, uh, we cannot try this, we cannot try that. So mm -hmm. I think that Gordon will be, if he were alive, he will be, of course, very uh, paying a lot of attention, but he will be thinking and reflecting much on what is going on online. Yeah. There, is a, there is a comment in the chat from Angela Eden that uh, it goes along with some of what Carla was saying, that uh, Angela is saying that it's... Uh, uh, it's more difficult for a psychoanalyst to shift from uh, interpretation to matrix. I think mm -hmm. we touched a little bit uh, this. And uh, my question, I will transform it. And uh, why so is it's it a so? Question, mm, it's a question for Carla. She is the psychoanalyst. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Angela. It's a pleasure to, to, to be with you here listening to us. So uh, I learned much from from her hosting her. I, I think that I was in one of two. Uh, I think it's a real challenge, Angela, because uh, I've, I've been hosting matrices with people, psychologists or, or sociologists, or but many of them are psychoanalysts. So there is this tendency to push the matrix to become a group. But not in mm. a way, not in terms of interpretation of the individual content of the dream, not on this way, but on the idea of making 
the matrix uh, look like a group instead of a matrix in a way that, well, what you, Carla, saying instead of, uh, for example, the person refers to the dreamer and not to the dream. So, so I try to, by the end of the matrix, say, pinpoint some ideas to make people focus on the idea of uh, being in a social dreaming matrix, not in a dreaming group. But I also want to be careful because I think that it will be so good to have the culture of, uh, establish the culture of social dreaming in Brazil because there is mm -hmm. so many possibilities. For example, people are thinking on, on, uh, on considering the possibility, I myself, I also considering the possibility of hosting or, or matrix matrices with people uh, who are working with in very distressed communities or places where there, there is an accident or even in, in Amazon where COVID is in a huge uh, uh, situation. Next matrix that we are hosting, uh, that I will host in, in, in March, there is a, a, a man who is a, a lead, a uh, is a, a doctor who works uh, in the morgue, you know? Mm -hmm. And he is interested on joining social dreaming. So I think it, it, it's very important. And I also start to dream with the possibility of uh, hosting matrices with these people who are working in very distressed communities because I think that will be a very important possibility. But I really don't know, Angela, if it will be a pure social dreaming or people will, with time, include uh, this or that. But I'm not God, not even a goddess. So I cannot control. I try to do my best to, to, to follow uh, what I learned. Thank you. So. Uh, there I is think a... I might be I might be wrong, but I also think there's quite a tradition in Brazil of applying psychoanalysis to social settings and social problems. So I think there's this particular culture you've got in Brazil. Yes, Fabio, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for this note. I think it's also true with uh, psychodrama and other um, disciplines that that were more used in the in the social context. I have a question for Julia from Sergio Di Giorgi, um, which is: What main differences you notice in the social dreaming overall process between the first phase when you chose the movie? freely and randomly when was the group to choose mm. it. And the second one in the more structure and team related. Yeah. That's Thank the you, Sergio. Mm. Thank you, Fabio. Uh, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> and I was thinking about it when I read it in the chat. Uh, and uh, I was thinking that I'm not sure if I can give you yet a, a um, concrete answer because uh, uh, we did only one experience uh, with the chosen movies and the second one is uh, work in progress. So we are uh, the half moment of this experience. So um, I think that I'm trying to give you an answer uh, in this moment. Uh, I think that uh, uh, when, for example, we chose to focus on emotions, uh, so we chose a topic uh, for the movie, uh, we uh, kind of try to elicitate uh, some uh, reflections. Of course, we thought about the topics linked to the social moment that we were experiencing. So um, we are like uh, trying to address our reflection to the direction of some topics. And um, uh, the uh, reflection is actually really interesting because what happens uh, in um, 
the um, provocative uh, stimuli that we are giving to the group uh, is that the group uh, is doing things in the dreams, the matrix is doing things in the dreams uh, instead of the main characters of the movie. For example, I can give you a nice example that came from the last session that we watched a movie of a transgender doing the transfiction and, and uh, um, um, he was not doing the psychotherapy and that's what the group noticed. <laughs> and uh, what happened in the dreams of the matrix uh, is that everybody was doing uh, in different ways, uh, symbolic ways, uh, psychotherapy in dreams. So sometimes uh, it's interesting because when you um, address the section, the session of the social dreaming, you can get very interesting, uh, um, very interesting uh, contribution in the direction that you were. Uh, just imaging uh, and it's making um, it's building up by the group i don't know if i answer but thank you for the reflection because we will think further about it yes thank you julia we have another question from uh, uh floris van der Waalt, uh, and i'll just uh say it to to everybody is, can social dreaming be used as a healing process for collective traumas? Mm. This oh. is a, this a is juicy what I one. Think. Very good question. <laughs> this is what I have is, in mind. Is it a therapy? Is it therapeutic? Or is it about studying the social unconscious? Or is it both? I don't know. Uh, maybe that's for another conversation. I see that we are... Uh, I don't know. Carla, do you want to say you seem very passionate yes. about it? Yes. Yeah, I'm, go on. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. totally passionate about it because I study for a long time uh, uh, social unconscious. And I like to think that uh, in the in contemporaneity, uh, after we started to do, to do the theory of uh, de de deconstructing everything, we, we don't think anymore this or that. We think in terms of both. Of course, what Gordon did, uh, it's, it's, it's brilliant, it's wonderful. But the frontiers, we don't know yet. I think that in my country, there is a huge possibility of approaching people together in social dreaming, through social dreaming matrices, because Dreams is something that is 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 prehistorical, <laughs> even as it's it's is among us for a long time, and I do hope that it will be possible to 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 alleviate or to to put people more together, sharing dreams and things. And if it's, I, I don't think it's psychotherapeutical but is a th if it's therapeutical of course it is even this conversation is therapeutic because in my point of view being with somebody else is already therapeutic because we learn from the other and we we are fed by the other so why not social dreaming do this mm. you can do this in a marvelous way such a good ending <laughs> such a good ending to the conversation but also thinking about uh yes further conversations yes yes we've already identified with fabio there are people who are working with katrina katrina survivors with the twin towers uh, yes there, i think there's been quite a lot of work done already in that area, yes. I don't know, yeah, Fabio, will. Who, who will close it? You will close it probably, yes. Yeah, no, I just wanna ask very briefly if Julia has something to add to this question. And I also wanna, uh, I wanna say loud the comment from Sammy uh, saying, I think it could help like psychotherapy art. Uh, maybe it's oh, a different type yeah. of therapy, but definitely therapeutic. Uh, I read a good definition that was saying um, it was probably on a Colombian newspaper. Martin Walker forwarded it to me 
it was in Spanish saying that uh, it's not therapy, but it contributes to the well-being of the people. So saying that uh, participating to social dreaming, engaging with that, uh, definitely uh, release good creative energy for the people. Do you have any yeah. comment on that, Julia? If I can add something, I completely agree to what Carla said and what you just said and mentioned. And uh, what we felt is like that this social dreaming is a psychosocial intervention and in this way is mm. therapeutical. And sometimes it's easier to get to social dreaming than to therapy because uh, sometimes people are intimidated by therapy. And also I think another thing that... Uh, um, Art uh, is the main topic of social dreaming. For example, we use movies. Uh, and in Italy, we have uh, every artistic area closed. Uh, so no cinema, no theater, no concert hall. And uh, having uh, a piece of art uh, inside the intervention is really uh, what I call therapy. So just this. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, it was an interesting uh, day. I want to thank you, everybody, uh, who was here in the Zoom and out there with their questions and, mm. and watching. Uh, we're going to definitely continue uh, with this series of events. We want to welcome uh, people who have social dreaming experience to uh, contact us. Uh, and uh, we, we have a program, we're going to make it uh, public very soon. And uh, we want to continue, we want to make it a regular, um, a regular appointment. And uh, we are also looking for support and any kind of support from, uh, uh, you know, liking this video right now will we'll make it more visible for other people who may be interested, sharing it even more. Uh, subscribing to the channel, make sure that next time we go live, you're going to be notified and you know. And, uh, and also, we, we're going to look for uh, institutional sponsors or people that want to help to develop this program a little longer and, uh, and better. And so, yeah, so we want to keep this conversation open. And uh, thank you again for watching. Thanks for being here. And uh, we're going to see you next time. Thank you, Carla and Julia, for opening the series. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, and uh, see you soon. Have a good evening or day, wherever mm -hmm. you are. Bye-bye. <laughs>